Hey, Dr. Weber here again, and this is your mini lecture about resistor capacitor circuits or RC circuits. So now we're going to talk about circuits that have resistors and capacitors together. And when I talk about an RC circuit, I'm referring to a circuit in which the circuit contains both resistors and capacitors. Now, in RC circuits, the current and potential difference on the capacitor varies in time, and there are equations that describe this. And the values of the resistance and capacitance in an RC circuit determine the time it takes the capacitor in our circuit to charge or discharge. And we have something called the characteristic time of our circuit, which we represent by the Greek letter tau, and that's just equal to the resistance in our circuit, the total resistance, times the total capacitance of our capacitors, however they're arranged, okay? And so here we have two examples of RC circuits. In this first one, we have a capacitor that is charging. So here we have our EMF source, and it's connected to our capacitor. So we assume that our capacitor was fully discharged, had no charge on the plates, and then we flip the switch here and we connect our capacitor to our EMF source, and that builds up a potential difference over time until reaching a maximum potential difference. And the way in which that potential difference builds up over time is described by an equation, which I'll show you on the next slide. Now, we've disconnected, once our, bat our capacitor is fully charged, we disconnect our capacitor from the, um, the, the uh, EMF source, and then we connect it across something that has some internal resistance, some resistance associated with it. So here we take our capacitor and we connect it to a, a resistor. And in this circuit here, our capacitor is discharging. The charge is uh, being removed off of the plates. And as it does this, its potential difference decreases across the plates and the, the uh, current changes as well. And the way in which the potential difference decreases over time in this discharging circuit also has an equation to describe it. And so here in this first, um, these first two panels here, we have again our charging RC circuit. Uh, the switch is closed here, so we're putting a charge on our plates, so we're building up a potential difference across the plates. And here is the plot of how that potential difference is increasing over time, how that um, this potential difference on our capacitor. Uh, and whenever we reach the, the characteristic time tau is equal to r over c, whenever we reach that characteristic time in our circuit, we are able to get a potential difference across our capacitor of 0.632 times the the maximum EMF on our power source. And then, um, and then at two times that characteristic time frame, we're here, three times that, four times that, and so on. So after many, many characteristic times, we're actually able to fully get that um, potential difference across our capacitor, which will essentially be the same as the EMF supplied by our power source. And so this is the equation that describes how that potential difference across our capacitor changes over time. V0, that's the um, total EMF that we can get across that capacitor, which would be, for instance, the total EMF of our power source, times 1 minus E raised to the power of minus T over tau. So tau is our characteristic time, R times C, the resistance times the capacitance of our circuit, and T is at some time, some time T, uh, whether that's two seconds or five seconds or eight hours, um, that's the time that has elapsed since we closed the switch. And then now we've fully charged up our capacitor. Let's say we disconnect it from the power source and let it uh, discharge across something that has some resistance. And so this is the, um, the graph that's showing how the potential difference across a capacitor decreases in time. And that equation is equal to the uh, maximum voltage that we had on top of our capacitor to start with times E minus 
t over our characteristic time. Okay. And so here at our characteristic time, t is equal to tau is equal to rc, at that time we achieve 0.368 times the maximum voltage that was able to be stored across the capacitor. And then as we increase, let the time continue over many, many, many characteristic time scales, eventually we're able to fully discharge our capacitor and fully remove any potential difference that was initially on those capacitor plates. And so now we are going to practice these RC circuits, but first we're going to have a refresher again about how we combine capacitors. So here we have three capacitors that are connected in parallel with a battery that produces eight volts of EMF. What is the total charge stored in this circuit? And so um, each of our capacitors has a different capacitance on here, uh, and we're going to combine these capacitors together in order to find out what is the total charge that we can store in this circuit. Okay, so we have three capacitors and they are connected in parallel with a battery that produces eight volts of EMF. What is the total charge stored within this circuit? So if we remember about parallel capacitors, the potential difference across them is the same. The charge on their plates is the total charge is equal to the sum of the individual, uh, the charges on the individual capacitors. And the uh, equivalent capacitance is also the sum of the individual capacitances of the capacitors in our circuit. So we want to find the total charge stored in our circuit. So we're looking for the total charge or the total charge on our equivalent capacitor and then that's going to equal to the uh, capacitance of our equivalent capacitor times the potential difference across it. So because our capacitors are in parallel with each other and because they're, they're connected directly to our battery, then the potential difference across each one of those capacitors, also the potential difference across our equivalent capacitor, is going to be the same as the potential difference of the battery, 8 volts, okay? So we know that. We just have to find the equivalent capacitance in order to get the charge stored on, uh, the total charge stored within the circuit, okay? And so our equivalent capacitance, since we have capacitors in parallel, we just sum up their capacitances. So the equivalent capacitance is going to be 5.9, nanofarads plus 5.1 nanofarads plus 6.9 nanofarads times our 8 volts. Okay, And so our answer here, since my capacitances are all in nanofarads, my answer is going to be in nanocoulombs rather than coulombs. And so my answer here, if I add all of the capacitances here, We've got the first one is 5.9 nanofarads, the second 5.1 nanofarads, the third 6.9 nanofarads. If we add all those together, multiply them by 8 volts, we get that the total charge stored in our circuit is 143 nanocoulombs. Okay? So that's just the answer to this first question that I asked you. But what if we wanted to go a step further? What if we wanted to find the charge stored on each one of these individual capacitors. Okay, um, And remember that if our parallel capacitors, our total charge here is going to equal the sum of all the individual charges on the individual capacitor. Okay, So um, the next part is also pretty simple. If we remember our equation again that Q is equal to capacitance times the potential difference. So then the charge stored on our first capacitor is going to equal its capacitance times the potential difference across it, which is 8 volts. The charge stored on our second capacitor is the capacitance of that one times the 8 volts. And the charge stored on our third capacitor is its capacitance times 8 volts. And so if I were to put in my uh, capacitance and 8 volts for each of those capacitors, if I were to sum up the charges 
on each of uh, the charge maintained on each of those individual capacitors, sum them up, I should get back the total charge stored in my circuit or the uh, charge stored on our equivalent capacitor. Okay, so now we have two identical 20 millifarad capacitors and we're connecting them in parallel to create a smaller capacitance. Now, these capacitors in parallel are in series with a, hunt with a 100 ohm resistor and a 10 volt power source. What is the potential difference across the parallel capacitors two seconds after the switch is closed? So we have two capacitors connected in parallel to produce a smaller capacitance. Now these are in series with a resistor and a power source. And so the question is, what is the potential difference across these parallel capacitors after two seconds once our switch, which is open right here, is closed? And so we're looking for V at T equals two seconds, okay? So right now my capacitors uh, have no charge on them. My switch is open, so there's no current in the circuit. Now I'm going to close this switch. And now the battery can supply a potential difference across these capacitors. And um, that potential difference is going to build up over time until reaching a peak uh, potential difference across it that is equal to the um, EMF supplied by our, supplied by our battery. battery. But it takes some time for our capacitors to build up the charge required to maintain this 10 volts of potential difference. This equation describes how that potential difference across our capacitors changes over time. Okay? And so we want to eventually find what is our potential difference across our capacitors at some time t is equal to 2 seconds. And when we're charging up our capacitor, this is the equation that we want to use to find the potential difference across those capacitor plates. And so that potential difference is equal to the, uh, the potential difference of our EMF battery supplying the power source times 1 minus E raised to the power of minus T over tau. And tau is our time constant for our resistor circuit or for our resistor capacitor, or our RC circuit. And that time constant is equal to the resistance of this resistor times the uh, total capacitance, let me say the equivalent capacitance in our system here. So we need to figure out first what is this time constant tau for our circuit. So tau is going to equal R times our equivalent capacitance. So because these two capacitors are in parallel, we add up the capacitances. And so the sum of those capacitances is going to be um, 20 millifarads plus 20 millifarads. So each one of these capacitors has a capacitance of 20 millifarads. And this resistor in our circuit is at 100 ohms. So our time constant is going to be 100 ohms times 20 times 10 to the minus 3 plus 20 times 10 to the minus 3 farads. Okay? So putting, putting those together, we find that our time constant is 4 seconds. Okay? So now we can find out our potential difference across our capacitors at time t. And since these capacitors are in parallel with each other, the potential difference across each of the capacitors is the same. And so the potential difference is going to be equal to our uh, 10 volts times 1 minus E to the negative 2 over 4. Okay, so our 2 seconds, that's the time at which I'm evaluating this system and I divide it by our time constant for our circuit, which we found to be four seconds. And so plugging all of those in, we get that the uh, potential on our capacitors at two seconds is equal to 3.9 volts.
volts, okay? Now, this is, of course, less than our maximum potential difference, which we can eventually get, which would be the maximum potential difference here of our battery. Now, after four seconds, our critical time here for our uh, uh, resistor capacitor circuit, then the capacitors will have built up uh, 0 0.632 times V0, times our um, potential difference across the battery. And so then we would have a potential difference across our capacitors of 6.32 volts. So I'll tell you what I mean here. Now if I just erase all of this stuff right here, let's evaluate our equation here for when we're charging up our capacitor at exactly four seconds, which was equal to our time constant in this uh, circuit here. So if I have V is equal to V0 times one minus E to the minus four seconds over four seconds, if I say that I'm evaluating this instead of that T is equal to two seconds, T is equal to four seconds, which is also the same as our critical constant, our critical constant here for our circuit. Then this is equal to V0 times one minus E weight raised to power of minus one. And so if you take E to the minus one, you get 0 0.368. And then, 1 minus 0 0.368 is 0 0.632, okay? And so then, at our critical time constant tau, the potential that we can get on these, uh, on these capacitors is equal to 0 0.632 times the maximum voltage supplied by our power source. And so then, since we have 10 volts for our power source, at four seconds, we are able to get 6.32 volts on, um, uh, across our capacitors here. And also, um, let's say that instead of charging our capacitor, we want to discharge our capacitor. Okay, let's say we've, after more than four seconds, we've let our uh, capacitors charge up to their full potential, which would be 10 volts, and then let's say that we disconnected our circuit, our capacitors, from the power source. And then we took our capacitors and we connected them to another device so that they discharge. And so if we want to evaluate the potential on our capacitors as they discharge, we use this equation here, where the potential is equal to the original potential we were able to pack on those capacitors times E raised to the minus T over tau. And our critical constant is still the resistance times the capacitance of our circuit. So let's talk about some examples of RC circuits in real life. They are around us all of the time, every day, and maybe you just don't think about them. Uh, so one really great example of this are the flash bulbs on our cameras. Uh, the, there's a capacitor that stores charge and it discharges very rapidly and it uh, creates a quick bright flash of light that we need to take photographs. For example, this uh, very fast stop motion image of a hummingbird flapping its wings. Defibrillators are RC circuits. So we talked about defibrillators before spring break. Roadway flashers, those uh, hazard flashers on the side of roads when somebody um, has a breakdown of their car, for instance, uh, pacemakers for hearts, and also neurons and nerve impulses. Uh, our nerves and our neurons can behave like RC circuits.